Hello, welcome back to One's Journey of Unwinding the Mind and of course your daily microdose. Now tune in to the latest episode of One's Journey. Today I want to talk about the silence. So I was reading last night, I'm, I'm reading the, these books by Ken Wapnick. It's like a whole series of Shakespeare books and I will be honest with you, I've never gotten into Shakespeare. I don't even, I, I didn't like the writing. I couldn't quite wrap my head around how these words were describing something grand enough in order for me to enjoy it. And then of course, The Course in Miracles, uh, which is Shakespearean, the way it's written is like Shakespeare. And so I have found a new love for it. But also I love everything Ken. Okay, the silence. I want to talk about this because it's been something I had been struggling with and I didn't realize why I've been struggling to be in spirit so often and I haven't been silent. I haven't allowed myself to be silent. So for the longest time I wondered how do we know we're doing what spirit says? How do we know we're in alignment with spirit? And what does that really look like? But last night I was reading in this book and I think it's, it was like this aha moment of like, oh yes, form doesn't matter. Remember Ashley, form doesn't matter, but content is what matters. And so if form doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it ends up looking like. I can be in this chaotic world. I can be talking to you guys. I can be screaming at the rooftops, you know, love Jesus or whatever the heck, but that doesn't equate to the silence in which we're talking about at the level of content. That's like in the mind, in the place of like where the ego belief system versus the Holy Spirit belief system. The It, it talks about in this book, like the peace of God shines in silence. And this book is really trying to relate it to King Lear, the his daughters. And right now he's talking about Cordelia and how she really just was in the silence. Her sisters were in the chaos and the anger and of course in the ego, but Cordelia, she found her strength in the silence. And that is how she was able to love her father still after all the things he had done in the destruction outside, because it wasn't about that. It, it, despite the external, the silence within is where, where the truth lies is where we remember that we are not a body. These things outside of us are not actually, they don't matter. I don't really matter, but okay. This is uh, chapter one. I'm only on page 32 and like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. I have been, I whipped out the highlighters, which I should have remembered since college. Like the second I whip out highlighters, there's nothing not highlighted anymore. Not that you care, but that's, that's why me and highlighters don't get along great because I highlight the entire book. Okay, when you, so it's about when you are striving, it says when you strive to do anything in this world in order to make it better, when you strive to make your body or other bodies better or attempt to heal relationships, you will fail. The peace of God shines in silence. So it's about that focus outside of you again instead of the focus within. So this is where I'm like, yes, this is what this means. It says, that does not mean that your body would not do anything in the world. It simply means the content behind your doing would be silence. Again, this does not mean you do not speak. It simply means your words would come from silence. All behavior would arise out of the inner silence of the Holy Spirit. Nothing you say or do would be motivated by desire to say or do. You simply behave in the way love shines through you. You appear to be quite active in the eyes of the world, but it will no longer be you who are doing anything. And I was like, wow. And I had this conversation the other day with a client, actually, we were talking about when you fully untie yourself from the ego or very close, do you truly sit in the chair of the observer? 
do you truly detach yourself from that is what appears to be Ashley, right? That's what I'm referring to as my body and truly just allow the script to play out and you as the observer are fully just the perception. And what I hear in this is the perception of silence is you just go, you don't sit and think, you just do. And in, in not in the manner of just the negative discussion we have about, oh, you never think, you just do. But in the manner of going to that place of inner guidance. And it talks later that the ego can provide you silence too, but that's more of like a you're in trouble, you get the silence treatment and you should be able to feel the difference of that. Instead of, it's just this place for me, it's like my ears start to ring when I go to the place, but it's not an external ring. It's like a deep internal humming noise. And I just in it, things seamlessly occur and right after they seamlessly occur. So let me give you an example. I just got done recording the Through the Lens, the Labyrinth. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend you check it out. It's here on the channel, Through the Lens, the Labyrinth. But anyway, I have wanted to do the Labyrinth for a long time. And finally this week, it was popping up in the Google and stuff because it's the anniversary of David Bowie's death and it would have been his 77th birthday this week. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. But I was struggling with what that would look like. But I had this deep internal knowing of what the video, like that it would all turn out. But I couldn't intellectually think it through like I usually do. And, and I, instead of forcing, I allowed myself to go to the silent place today. Now I had been dealing with this for a couple days where I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't record it yet. Oh my gosh, I'm not prepared to record like over and over again. And that's really how I do these videos. I will tell you that these videos that you watch of one's journey are not like maybe the most is I have an idea of the topic and Patrick and I might have a small conversation the night before, a few days before. But other than that, I really just rely on spirit coming through me and, and, and by me not preparing, I think is when I'm able to do that best. But that was the reminder of it. Go back to that silent place. So I did, I went back to the silent place, which felt like I removed the weight of creating this video, the labyrinth and recording it today. And I kind of just allowed it all morning. I usually would have rushed to get it recorded. And instead I just allowed this seamless opportunity to just listen and trust. And I just got done recording it and I fully felt in spirit. I fully felt that I was speaking the words of spirit and not the intellectual words that I had so been trying to do. And I think the being in the silence and then just trusting and allowing your body to do what be, whatever actions, say whatever to the person, whatever the action may be, is often a, a it feels scary when we say that, but it's not scary when you do it. And I think we're taught, like, think before you speak. So it makes me question even that statement of think before you speak, think before you do. Is that actually another ego tactic to keep us in this place of intellectualizing, which we know the brain is a creation of the ego. So we are in the ego when we're intellectualizing and to keep us from just that inner knowingness. I don't know, but so the silence, I wanted to share that with you because first of all, I've sat in the silence a lot. That's really how I started the course was in the silence, especially doing the workbook. And it's a reminder of being in the silence. And I don't know, I, I strayed away and found my way back today and was reminded how beautiful it is in the silence and that it's really not about you being silent, like your body. It's about the observer going back to the place of the observer and, and requesting the guidance, allowing the guidance, trusting the guidance, and then just trusting what may be afterwards. And yeah, I could go on forever on this conversation. I would love to hear more of your thoughts. I know right now my mind is in this rabbit hole place and I'm not sure if I'll be able to continuously spout out words that are going to make sense to you. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, but I encourage you to go watch the labyrinth video that is here on the channel and check that out as well as 
you know, go back and revisit some of the early videos that are really the foundational pieces that I think we sometimes forget, which makes sense because we want to complicate it because that's what the ego does when it is just so freaking simple. And I think for me recently, complicating it is what has got me into just this place of ugh, ugh, belief in the ego, right? And I talk about that in the labyrinth video. Okay. Thank you so much, as always, for being a part of this community. I'm so grateful for you. I can't wait to hear what you think about the movie or the Labyrinth video, as well as going back and revisiting the foundationals. Comment below. Do you sit in the silence? What does that feel like to you? And then how do you trust afterwards for just action to occur? As always, friends, remember you are worth it. So much love. Bye-bye.